Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. This is a YouTube live event. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday, May 25th, and the year is 2020. Whether you're here for the live or you are here for the replay, I am so glad that you've joined me. Welcome. I've got a really cool card tonight. I'm going to tell you it's on an angle, a big slant, literally. And I can't wait to share with you the two different techniques that I'm going to be using on this card. I'm going to demonstrate one right along with you, but I have several other samples to share as well as some, some photo templates. Boy, that was a mouthful there for just a minute. The one thing about live, you just never know what's going to happen. So make sure you stay with me to the end of tonight's live so that you can see everything that I'm going to be sharing with you. And if you're looking for the pictures, the cutting dimensions, the photo template, as well as the supplies I'm going to be using, those are going to be down below the video description when tonight's live is over. You're going to need to give me a few minutes so I can come back and put those links there for you. You're going to want to scroll through the video description to find the link or head over to lisasstampstudio.com and look for the May 25th, 2020 blog post. I also want to take care of a couple of housekeeping items before we get started on tonight's live. First and foremost, I want to introduce you to my assistant, Megan. You'll see Megan's name here in blue. She is not a virtual assistant and the fact that she is not real. She is very real. And she is here to interact with you and answer your questions because quite frankly, there's no way to keep up with the comments because you are here to see me stamp and that's what we're gonna be doing together. So Megan's gonna keep up with um, your questions and your comments the best that she can. Remember there's one of her and quite a few of you, but she does a fantastic job. In addition to that, if you would like to chat with us or you would like to read the chat, if you are here for the replay, you can do so very easily by logging into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. I do come back and I read every single comment when the video and the live is over. So please interact with us. We'd love to chat with you. Okay, I think we're ready. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the camera down, get you all zoomed in and get ready for tonight's stamping. Here we go. Thank you for those who have shared tonight's video. I really appreciate that. Okay, I think I've got you in. Let's see how this goes. Like I said in the beginning, I have a photo template to share with you. I did do some cutting ahead of time. So I wanna talk you through the cutting dimensions before we get started. I cut both of these pieces the exact same size. It is seven and a quarter by nine inches. So I've got a piece of cardstock and a piece of designer series paper. You're gonna notice that I cut this beautiful poppy paper strategically because I wanted the flowers to be at the bottom. This is a great tip for you if you're at home using designer series paper. Look for these beautiful patterns and be very strategic about your cutting so they can be part of your focal point for your card. And quite honestly, aside from a greeting, it's gonna be good to go the way it is. But you know, since you're here with me live, I'm gonna step things up a little bit and show you some other things that you can do. So I cut these the same size before we're gonna do the rest of our cutting and scoring. And that's gonna be very important for the angle or the slant we're gonna create on tonight's card. Now, I don't normally use liquid glue, but I'm going to tell you that's gonna be very, very important for tonight's project. You're not gonna to wanna to use adhesive. I found that it doesn't work very well for this project because it's gonna leave buckling in the areas we have to score. The other nice thing about liquid glue, and I always start in the middle because if you've ever seen me with liquid glue, I'm a little messy with it, which is one reason why I don't favor it typically. You want to make sure you get it started so you don't have a big clump coming out. And you want thin lines because you know it's going to ooze outside of the perimeter of where you put it. All right, so we're going to wiggle that some around the inside and we'll screw that back on. That glue, just like all the other products you're going to see me use tonight, are all available in my online store. Just go to lisastampstudio.com and click on shop. All right, I've adhered this to the top. I just kind of shimmy this. The one nice thing about liquid glue, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room and then I'm gonna press. I wanna make sure that I've got good adhesion, especially near those edges, because there's nothing worse than making a card or a project and then it comes apart, right? Now this is gonna need a few minutes to dry before you cut and score, but I did do another one right before you joined me that's good and dry. So let me stick that one off to the side. And there we go, the magic of live TV, right? I kind of feel like a fancy cooking show right now. <laughs> the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create a, a slant here but I wanna give you an important tip. I am going to measure where I'm going to start my slit tonight or my little start mark 
but you can vary this. You can make it as high or as low as you want. So I want you to experiment. On the second photo template I'm gonna share with you, the slant, the angle is very different. So it's gonna give you a lot of room to be creative. I love that. So let's just go ahead and bring in my grid paper. That's gonna allow me to do some measuring here quick and easy. These um, grid sheets are the large ones. These measure about 10 by 16. I love them if you have a big work surface to cover up. There's a ruler here down in the lower left-hand corner that goes on both sides. So whenever I'm doing something large like this, I can line this up right in the corner. So I'm looking to align this the best that I can here and here. And I'm gonna measure up about four and a quarter inches. Now I know you're not gonna be able to see my pencil mark on the video, because obviously I don't want it to be too obtrusive. But I'm gonna go here at the four and a quarter inch mark and I'm gonna make a line. Probably making it a lot darker than I normally would because I want you to be able to see it. I think you might be able to see it there, okay? That's gonna give me an idea of where I need to cut. So I'm gonna bring back in the trimmer. And the Stampin' Trimmer is a fabulous product simply because it allows you to score and to cut on the same track. So the light blade is for scoring, the dark blade is for cutting. I love that they navigate up and down out of the way so you can keep them on the track at the exact same time. The other thing I love about this product is that this clear track right here allows you to see through it. So you can actually measure on both sides of this. All right, we're gonna create some score lines first. So we're gonna use the light blade here. Now I'm gonna flip this upside down because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to see even though this is dark versus that pattern. So we're gonna make the first score line at three inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna score that here. You know what? I decided I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna take a chance that I do this wrong. I'm gonna do it this way. Bear with me. I think you're gonna be able to follow along. The score lines are really, really easy. So three inches here, I'm lining it up. There's a line all the way down on the trimmer, which is gonna make it easy to follow. There's a straight edge here at the top and then we're going to score. So we've got one at three inches, and now we're gonna move over to the six inch mark, which is right here, right along this edge. And let me score one more time. I'm glad I didn't flip it over because I would have had a mirrored image. That's really important for you at home. I wanna make sure you know to score from the front. Now, the other thing I wanna show you about this trimmer is it has an extended arm here. So look, it goes all the way out to about 17 and a quarter inches. So if you're cutting 12 by 12 cardstock, you're doing mixed media, boxes, bags, this is going to be a great product for you. Now, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to cut from that little tick mark up to the top of this corner, which is gonna give us a big slant or a big angle. So I'm gonna come back in with my trimmer one more time, and I've navigated the score blade up to the top, and I've got my cutting blade here. Now I've moved it down out of the way just to make sure that it doesn't cut before I'm ready to do so. I'm gonna open up the arm, and I'm gonna navigate this so that my tick mark is here in the track and that this edge here is down near the bottom. I try to get this whole thing inside your camera view. Let me move you out a little bit. There we go. It's not a pretty view on the side, but I think you can see a little bit better. The one nice thing about this is you can actually pivot the paper to make sure that it's aligned. The black area here is where the blade travels to cut. So I'm looking to put this pencil line inside the track and I'm looking to put the edge of this paper down all the way here at the bottom of your screen inside the track. I wish I could move up a little bit more, but I'm out of table space, friends. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna close the arm and I'm gonna use that dark blade and I'm going to cut once and I'm gonna cut twice. Remember you're going through two layers. One is the designer paper and one is the cardstock and that's gonna leave you this. Now I know lots of you creative people will come up something fun with that. I'm gonna set that aside for right now. And that's gonna leave us this. This is actually the base of our card. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna work on reinforcing those score lines. And I know you're probably not gonna be able to see them from the back, but I can feel them. So I'm gonna come up here on this first one and I'm gonna fold it. And that's gonna to be towards the inside of my card. And I'm gonna use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. Whenever you are making a fun fold, you want to make sure that you are reinforcing those score lines because you want your card to lay nicely. Now this fold is actually gonna go back on top of itself. So look at that, isn't that fun? This is gonna be fantastic when we're finished. Wait till you see how we're gonna decorate this. And then again, I'm reinforcing this. This is one reason why I use liquid glue versus adhesive, because adhesive would have created a lot of buckling in here, and you would have had to cover the whole thing. So liquid glue is the go-to adhesive you're gonna to wanna to use for this project. 
Now you're going to see here that your colored cardstock is going to play a factor into the design of your card. So you're going to want to coordinate the paper to the designer paper that you choose. And the one reason I love Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink and the cardstock coordinate with the paper and of course all of our accessories. I thought this was a little naked for my taste. So since we're together, I decided to do a little bit of stamping here just to give you some ideas. So I'm gonna bring in my scrap piece of paper here. I've got a smaller grid sheet here. And we know it's this area here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this up. And I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping right here so that when the card is closed, it's not gonna be so naked. And I'm gonna use the same color ink as we have cardstock. So that's old olive. Let me open that up. And I'm going to use this splatter image. And this actually comes from the coordinating stamp set to this designer series paper. This is called Painted Poppies. And let me show it to you. Here's the stamp set here. You're going to find this in the current catalog. I love it because, oh, who can you not love a poppy with? Here's that splatter image here. I love these images because if you don't feel like coloring, you don't have to. You can use them to color in or provide some color to these other outline images here in the set. This also comes available as a bundle right now until June 2nd. When that new catalog comes out on June 3rd, this is no longer going to be available as a bundle with the coordinating dies. So if you love this as much as I do, make sure you head over to lisastampstudio.com and you look for Painted Poppies Bundle. All right, I know that this ink is gonna be fairly dark, so I'm gonna ink it up and I'm gonna stamp off on my scratch paper just to reduce that shade. And then I'm gonna work inside of here and I'm gonna vary that pattern a little bit. I am not even worried if some of the images overlap each other because it's gonna be very, very forgiving. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of a background here. It does not have to be pretty. So let's go close this and that looks pretty good. We need a little bit something here, I think. So let me open this up one more time. And I'll stamp off, and then I'm going to add a little bit of color there. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, yeah, that looks a little bit better. It gives a little texture to that. In addition to that, it's going to lend some credence to the splatter on the inside of our card. Obviously, very optional. I'm going to stamp off the excess ink here on my scratch paper. That's a great tip for you if you're like me. You don't like to get up from your stamp table to go rinse out your chamois or your scrub when you're cleaning your stamps. If you're doing a lot of stamping, a marathon style, that tends to get really dirty and it muddies up after a while. So I'd like to stamp off that ink. Now let's work on decorating this. The first thing I'm going to do actually this time is start on the inside because I'm going to want that placement for where I'm going to put the elements of today's card. So I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. I'm looking at my cutting dimensions. This is two and three eighths by three and three eighths. And I'm going to stamp a greeting on there using the Memento Black ink. I've gotten lots and lots of questions about this ink pad. It is not available right now. I know, boo hiss. And it has a lot to do or everything to do with COVID-19. I think you all know that shipping um, products from all over the place, the supplier in the U.S., they are behind. Um, everybody's working on skeleton crews, social distancing, and all of that good stuff. So we are just being as patient as possible. Now my head is far away, so I'm hopeful. Well, that's pretty good. All right, so we've got a little note. Now you might be wondering where I got that greeting from, and that's gonna be coming from the same stamp set that I'm gonna to use to decorate this card. So I'll show that to you in just a second. I'm gonna move that off to the side, and I'm gonna bring in my beloved silicone craft sheet. I don't use adhesive without this, because adhesive Liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it. It's going to rub right off, which means I'm going to keep my work table nice and clean and sticky free. I'm going to add some adhesive to the back side, and I've cut another piece of coordinating cardstock. This one is Mossy Meadow. This is two and a half by three and a half. And then what I'm going to do is adhere these two together. So it's going to give this a little bit of a margin of color. It's a little darker than the old olive on purpose because I want to stand out here on the inside of my card. Then I'll go ahead and I'll add adhesive to the back side of this one as well. I'm going to add a little bit more than I did on that white piece because I want to make sure this doesn't lift. And I'm going to gravitate this near the bottom because I want to make sure it doesn't peek out over the top of my card. Okay, so don't go too high when you put your card together. All right, now we get to do the fun part. That's the decorating. I'm going to be using some scrap Whisper White cardstock here. And I'm going to be using that black ink pad once again. And I decided that that paper needed some bugs, but what other bug is more beautiful than a butterfly, right? I love this. 
So Butterfly Gala Stamp Set has a coordinating butterfly duet punch. They are sold separately, but I absolutely love them. I chose to use this one. You're going to notice there's some solid images here, and I'm going to show you how these work. It is super easy because the stamp set is clear. It's photopolymer. Now, you might notice that some of my images are a little bit stained, and that's just from the pigmentation of the ink. It absolutely has no bearing on the quality of the stamp or how well that it works. So I'm going to stamp one here, and then I'm going to stamp another here. Do you see how the big and the little butterfly are actually connected? Because that is the way the punch works. And I love that. That's going to make it really, really easy for you to use. Again, I'm going to come here, stamp off all that extra ink. and save me trips to clean out my stamp and scrub. All right. The next thing, obviously, would be the body. Now, you can stamp that now or you can stamp it after you punch. To be quite honest with you, it's just a matter of preference. There is no right or wrong way. I found that if I stamped it first, I had a tendency to make it a little bit too high. So just for grins, let's do one before and one after so that you can see both ways and then you can decide. So there are bodies for your butterfly. There's obviously a little bit larger and a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take my little bit larger. This end tends to be a little bit wider here at the top. I'm calling that the head. So I'm going to stamp that here. And I'm going to try to go a little lower this time. Kind of make sure you can see this one. This is the smaller one. This one, I really can't tell much of a difference between the top and the bottom, but we'll stamp that there. Okay, so we've got our bodies. Remember, this one we're going to do at the end. So I'm going to leave these dirty, put those off to the side. The next thing I'm going to do now, let me just move that ink pad off, is I am going to fill these with those solid images that are part of that stamp set. So let me bring my grid paper back in because we're going to do some stamping off on one of these colors. Now, the colors I chose are coordinating with this. Again, the beauty of the color coordination. So I'm going to start with the lightest color first, which is Calypso Coral. That's one of the colors in the paper. And you'll see that there is a solid image here for the top of the wings. Now, mine looks pink because I had used it in a really strong pink color at one time. Again, it does not affect the stamp. And look, it's clean, so don't worry. I'm going to ink this up. And I've decided that I want the top of my butterfly feathers or wings, sorry, lighter. So I'm going to stamp off. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to fill this. Photopoly photopolymer. Gosh, I'm having a hard time talking tonight, aren't I? It makes it really easy to, to, for you to line up. And I can see I saw my head in the camera. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, when you get to be my age, your head's got to be a lot closer to the paper these days. And then there's another image here that fills in the bottom. So let's go ahead and ink that up as well. And then I'm going to do my best not to get my head in the camera. And this is where I could use a little help. I wish you were here with me. And there we go. Not so great. I guess I um, didn't do a very good job from my head far away. That's okay because I've got a couple others that I've stamped ahead of time. This now is the small butterfly image that's going to fill this. So I'm going to ink this up. I'm going to stamp that off. I want this one lighter. Let's see. That's a little bit better. You know what I just did? Okay, this is the beauty of live. Do you see what I did? I have this on backwards. Oh my gosh. Has anyone ever done that or am I the only person? Yeah, I put it on backwards. So here's the raised edge of my stamp and I actually had the smooth side. Oh, that's kind of funny. Okay, we're gonna fix it for this one. I'm really glad I made a couple of these butterflies before you stamped with me. All right, well, I make mistakes just like you guys do. I'm no different. Blackberry Bliss is going to be the other color that I'm going to use. Let's see if I can redeem myself now on this other one. This is a very, very strong color. It is highly pigmented, all right? It is as dark as it looks. So I'm going to be very careful about how I fill this. So I am going to ink this up just like I've done before. I've got you zoomed in so my head's not in the camera when I stamp. And this time I'm going to stamp off once twice before I go and do the bottom. Look, I got it right this time. It's going in the right direction. Yay. And then this is going to come down here and I'm going to do my best to try to fill that. Okay. Again, my head's kind of far away. All right. And then we're going to come up here now to the top of that butterfly. And because I know this is super duper dark, I'm still going to stamp off one layer of ink before I attempt to fill these in. And there we go. Then we've got this one. Now, we've got the smaller butterfly here, and I'm going to use that same solid small butterfly stamp once again. I hope some of you are laughing with me and <laughs> because I can't be the only person who has made this many mistakes 
when they've put their stamps on their stamps. I'm telling you what, I am by no sense of the word perfect. I make a lot of mistakes. You should see my trash can. All right, there we go. Remember, this is the one that we actually had stamped the body on beforehand, but of course it's not looking real pretty. But here is that coordinating punch. Oh, you gotta love it, it's all lined up. Let's go ahead and let's punch these out. Hey, I did a pretty good job, I think, of lining up those um, butterfly bodies this time. I like to look to make sure they're as symmetrical as possible. Look, you're not gonna be able to tell my boo-boo too much. That's really a good thing. That's gonna give us these. So those have the bodies on them already. But here is exactly why I like to stamp the body last. You see there's a little bit of excess white here, which means I didn't gravitate it in one direction or the other. All right, and let's come over here and let's do this one. And the exact same thing. This is the one I'm actually going to stamp the bodies on now after I've punched. But you know what? The way things are going for me tonight, it might not be much of a difference, right? Okay, and then I am going to bring in my scratch paper once again, just in case I have a little excess running off my edges here. And I've got my black ink. And then let's go ahead and take those bodies. This was the first one I used for the bigger butterfly. All right, I am trying not to get my head in your camera view. Let's see. Hey, a little better. Okay, there's hope for me. There's hope. Maybe I can redeem myself just yet. And then here's the small one. And then let's move that little guy down. And the reason I like this is obviously photopolymer um, attracts the color of the ink you're using. And you can kind of see where you're going which allows you to place it a lot easier. All right, so for me, I like to stamp the bodies after because it allows me to fill in that white area a little bit better. That's just a Lisa thing. You're gonna experiment and find out what works best for you. The good news is I have really pretty ones that I made before you join me. So I've got this one and this one, and then I've got the Blackberry Bliss ones as well. I've got those here. Now you're gonna see the exact same thing here. I stamped this body before I punched it. This one I did after. And these, obviously I had my head, my near 60 year old head, very, very close to the table to get that alignment. Because when you get to be my age, you gotta have a lot of visual impact on your projects. All right, now comes the fun part. Let's put these together and we're gonna add antennas as well. So I'm gonna zoom you out a little bit so you'll be able to see a little bit more of the project. Let's push these off to the side. Here is our card. Now, we can work within these flowers to play up some areas. Make sure that you don't work outside the circumference of your card because you don't want those butterflies to be ripped off while you're pulling it in and out of an envelope. So depending on what color you're going to place here will have a lot to do with what color butterfly you have. So the way this paper was cut, I've got more coral here. So let's go ahead and choose a darker butterfly for this one. So I'm gonna flip that over and I'm grabbing my dimensionals right here. I'm gonna pull one of those off and I'm gonna stick one right here in the middle. And I love to use my paper piercing tool attachment on my take your pick tool to help me pull those off. And then what I'm gonna do next is I am going to attach this butterfly. Now I kinda of wanna make it look like it's moving, but I'm gonna work it here near the top because I'm gonna add some antennas up there. And again, if you don't wanna do that, you don't have to, but I wanna show you how. So I've got this here and I'm gonna open up my card so you can see that there's no dimensional showing. Be very careful with your placement. And then there's two different size antennas. These are the larger ones for our larger butterfly. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up. Now, you may decide you wanna use your handy dandy pencil. Give yourself a little bit of a tick mark there so that you know where to put it. And then again, stamp it. All right, so now, oh, <laughs> this is not my night. I'm sending this card to my mother. You know what? She likes everything I do. All right, let's just, oh gosh. Okay, look it. We got another hidden butterfly behind there. I am going to fix that if that's the last thing I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to fix that right now. Where is my old olive ink pad? Okay, you know what? Sometimes you got to think on your feet, right? All right, can we line up a butterfly right here? Okay, let's see if we can get creative. I'm gonna teach you how to fix a boo-boo. This is a Lisa trick. It requires a piece of scotch tape, all right? You are going to place it on top of the stamp. I'm making a little tab right here so I have something to pull off. We are gonna mask off what we don't want to use. We only want that small butterfly. So let me get another piece of tape. You can see that household tape becomes a big factor here in my studio. That is gonna allow me to ink just this butterfly so we can give it some antennas. All right, let's pray this works because I'm having a really off night. 
I think I've been in the house too long. Is anybody else feeling like that? Okay, take off the tape. That's really important. Boy, have I made that mistake before. And let's make sure we put this in the right place. Okay, so it's these right here. All right, let's see. Can we make this work? Can we make this work? Can we make this work? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, okay. So when you open it, we've got another one. Yeah, mom's getting this card because thank God mothers like everything we make. Oh, heavens. This is not going as I planned. All right, small butterfly. Here we go. We're going to flip this one over and we are going to use um, the mini dimensionals. You know, if you can't laugh at yourself, who can laugh with you, right? Just, just nobody. And you know what? Let's do something a little bit different. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and just kind of hover this where we're going to put this. And let's go to those little small antennas now. Let me move that old olive ink out of the way because that would just be the way things go tonight, wouldn't it? I would use those green antennas. Here's the black. And then I'm going to stamp that right here first. Well, that was a good hindsight, wasn't it? You know, when you make it yourself, when nobody's watching, things always go so much smoother. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right. Inside of the card, here's the fun part. You can use this area to your advantage. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Since I have one of the Blackberry um, Bliss butterflies here, I'm going to go with a different color one up here. So I'm going to go and take one of these smaller ones that we just punched out, and I'm going to add a mini dimensional to the back side. I can't wait to show you the other cards I made using this exact same layout. Those don't have any mistakes. You're going to be really happy to hear that. And then just like we've done before, let's go ahead and get an idea on where we're going to put that little butterfly. And let's stamp those antennas first. Oh, hindsight. It's 2020, isn't it? And there we go. We've got another butterfly. And then let's go ahead and put our last big one that we made over here on the inside. Now you can place this wherever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and work here near the top. Be cognizant of the crease. This time we're gonna use one of the larger dimensionals because we know that fits really good on the back. And then again, I can never get these off without my paper piercing tool. And again, we've learned a really hard lesson tonight. We're gonna go to those larger antennas. I'm gonna get an idea on placement. Okay, there's my crease, so let's go over here somewhere. And then I'm gonna stamp those right there. And then let's go ahead and attach that right there. Okay, I will tell you, probably not the neatest card I've ever made as far as neatness is concerned, but really, really fun. But I wanna show you the other cards that I have created using this exact same layout. Let me, do me a favor. I'm gonna close this up because the way things are going, um, that's gonna be all over the place. Let me show you the one I made earlier today that worked out really, really good. Here is the good example. This one has no antenna mistakes. So here you go. You can see that I stamped it here, that same background, and then here's the inside of my card. So all I did was vary the colors of these butterflies, just depending on where I was going to place them with the designer series paper. All right, ready for the next one? All right, the next one uses a belly band on the card. And this is the Daisy Lane stamp set. And this time I decided to make a belly band to keep the card closed. Because I know some of you are probably like, well, it's got a little bit of a spring effect. And I kind of like that. But if that bothers you, this is a way for you to close the card. So this is one inch by eight and a half inches. I just cut this on an angle, nothing fancy. Stamped, put it right inside some circle punches. I didn't even stamp here. Slid that off. I let that white paper do the work. Very, very simple. Isn't this ornate garden designer paper really pretty? No sense to add anything else. I think that's all I needed. So that's this one and this one. So belly band, no belly band. And here is the photo template I promised you for that card. So again, I started at the four and a quarter inch mark. But remember, you can go lower or you can go higher. So there's a lot of creative freedom here with this pattern. So that's for these two cards. Now I have one more because... You may be saying to yourself, Lisa, those won't fit in a regular medium size envelope. And your answer is, you're correct. It will not. So for these style cards, you're going to either need to use a legal size mailing envelope, or you're going to create your own custom envelopes, perhaps maybe using an envelope punch board. I don't know about you, but I think it's worth it, quite frankly. Now, if you use a legal size envelope, you'll have a little bit of extra room, so your card will move around a little bit. Uh, it doesn't usually bother me, especially if you could feel this. This is nice and thick because of the double layers. All right, and then the next one is a smaller card. Now, let me show you what I did. I designed this one on purpose so that it would fit in that medium size envelope. 
So this one is actually five and a half by nine. I scored at the same places, three and six. I started at three and a half, but keep in mind, you can navigate up or down to variate this card if you want. And then here is the smaller version. And again, no antenna mistakes on this one, go figure. Okay, and then exact same card, it's just smaller. So for those of you that are wondering, here is the envelope and it fits down inside perfectly. Now you are gonna have, this is about maybe an inch of space here before you seal it. But if you could feel this, it's really, really thick. It's literally not going to slide because of the thickness of the card. It will mail, first class mail for one stamp. You don't have to worry about it being too heavy for that. So tonight we've got two templates. We've got this one and we've got this one. You're gonna have both of these over on my website at lisastampstudio.com. Scroll down a little bit to get to the blog for May 25th, 2020 for the blog post. Both of the photo templates are gonna be there. Give me a few minutes. You're gonna have pictures for all of these cards, the nice ones, <laughs> including the belly band. Now I wanna share some information with you about the new catalog and my exclusive and generous ordering rewards. Let me flip the camera around. Okay, well, now you get to see me and say, Lisa, you messed up. I mess up a lot. You should see my trash can. You know what? Sometimes you gotta break a few eggs to make a perfect cake, right? Well, the brand new catalog is coming out just next week. It's a week from Wednesday on June the 3rd, and I would love for you to request your copy. You can do so, you can do that right over at lisasstampstudio.com. Click on catalogs. You'll be able to download the current catalog, but if you want to request the new one, you can do that there. All the information is there for you. You're going to want to do that soon because if you want your catalog uh, by June 3rd, you're going to want to request it right away. In addition to that, while you're there, I would encourage you to click on the rewards tab in my menu bar. I give exclusive and generous ordering rewards for my customers that use my host code. Now that host code changes on the 25th of every month, which is today, so there's a new code today. I offer a free Live with Lisa event, which is a private YouTube event. I send them a private link where they get to join me for some private stamping and I give them a whole bundle of tutorials for free. I also do product prize giveaways during that event. For orders of $50 or more, they're gonna get all of that, plus they're gonna get a gift list from me on the 25th of the month, and they can choose a free gift that they'd like from that list. So my customers today also got their gift list to be able to choose a gift from that list, just as my thank you for their order. Now, a couple of things I wanna share with you before we go. If you have enjoyed tonight's video, I would love it if you'd give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, because it certainly helps. And I would love to have you subscribe because I'm coming back live with you next Monday, which is June 1st already. So I would love to have you be here with me. If you click the small bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll get notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. When you head over to lisastampstudio.com, not only are you able to request your catalog there, but you're able to sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. There I share a tutorial project that I do not share on any of my other platforms. And it's a no frills kind of newsletter. So I'd love to have you join us. Thanks for your patience with me tonight. I'm reaching over for the more perfect card. And here you go. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this new angle on card making. And I look forward to seeing you back with me in next week on June 1st. I hope you all have a great night. Megan, thanks for your all your hard work tonight interacting with everyone. Take care, everyone.